You may remember years ago, a headphone came out called the Aeon Noir. It was one of the best closed back headphones available at the time, especially under $1,000. And now it's got a sequel, the Noir X. Let's talk about it. This is the DCA Aeon Noir X. If you've been watching the headphone show for a while, you might remember I actually covered the E3 last year and really, really loved it. I called it the best sounding closed back I've ever heard. And this, well, is kind of a continuation of that. In some ways, the E3 is better, but in some ways, I actually also prefer the new Noir X. So I'm going to start with build and comfort. We'll talk about subjective sound, and then I'll do objective sound and frequency response after that. And don't worry, there will be comparisons in here to the E3. I'm DMS, you're watching The Headphone Show, and this is my review of the Noir X. So first thing to note, I do actually like that this doesn't have the sort of like carbon fiber or other looking patterns on the side here. Downside of that is this is, as I'm sure you can tell, a fingerprint magnet, as is anything black and glossy. Look at those fingerprints. That's just going to be a downside of it. There's nothing you can really do about it that I know of unless you like wearing gloves all the time. I'm not going to do that. I personally don't care too much of what a headphone looks like when it's on my head, but it's a fingerprint magnet. Now, what's different between this and the previous Noir that I see immediately is that this has the sort of self-adjusting headband on top, the same thing we see on the Expanse, the E3, and the DCA Stealth, where there's an elastic component inside. You just put the headphones on and they adjust automatically rather than having to move a suspension strap up and down the side. These still have these articulating yokes that allow the headphone to collapse inwards on itself. As I'm sure you can tell, they are closed back. This has the meta material design that we see in things like the Stealth Expanse and E3, which is actually, I guess, making it now the most uh, affordable headphone with a meta material design that DCA makes. Now, this is still in the ballpark of like the roughly thousand dollars range. I don't remember the exact MSRP, but I'm assuming based off the previous generation that it's going to be around that mark. Uh, and for a headphone that has this specific tuning method, that does make it the cheapest one out there. Outside of that, an immediate difference that I noticed between this and the E3 build-wise is that on the high res connectors they use, the Noir X has recessed connectors versus the E3 where the connectors are external. But you also notice looking at them side by side, the E3 has larger cups overall, and that reflects on the inside of the cups as well. The ear cup is a bit more forgiving on the E3, so while the Noir has a bit more kind of vertical ear space, the E3 has more lateral ear space. Just for the sake of comparison, if I take my calipers here, on the Noir at its widest point, I'm getting about 43 millimeters wide and 82 millimeters tall. In the very center, we're looking at ballpark 19 millimeters deep. And on the deepest end, we're looking at about 30 millimeters deep. On the E3, we're looking at about 52 millimeters wide, 79-ish millimeters tall. At the center point, 28 millimeters deep, and at the deepest end, 31 millimeters deep. So the E3 definitely has a more spacious ear cup than the Noir does, though the Noir I definitely would not call a small ear cup by any means. Throwing this on the scale real quick, E3 is coming in at 459 grams, and the Noir is coming in at 400. And now after a moment, 402. And that does translate on head. The Noir does feel a little bit lighter than the E3. On the Noir, it doesn't affect me quite as much despite feeling similar. I think that's just because of the extra roughly 50 grams that have been shaved off in this headphone. Now, either way, I would probably still put something on there like this. This is a ZMF Crescent Snap. It, you just wrap that around and it would button on itself on the top. Something like that helps out a lot in my personal opinion. I do wish that these were just just slightly padded on the bottom. Like that would make a world of difference. Give me like three or four millimeters of just padding on the bottom side of this and not this stitching and I would be so happy. That'd be awesome. Either that or just a soft headband, one or the other. One other downside, the pads are glued on. Now that is kind of an upside and a downside. The upside is it's going to get significantly better seal to the baffle. Uh, downside being that, you know, when you put on new pads, you have to essentially peel these off, put on an adhesive layer, and then put the new pads on. So it is what it is. Not the end of the world, but I know that it's something that there are people who complain about it, and uh, I don't blame them. I do like being able to swap pads, 
but at this point, this headphone does so many other things right, I do feel like it's kind of nitpicky. It does have a carrying case similar to the rest of the DCA Aeon lineup and a traditional Aeon cable. Nothing crazy going on here. I do like the cable more with the E3, but this one is fine. Nothing to complain about, really. It's just an okay cable. And on the last note of building comfort, the isolation. I tried to notice a difference between them to really, really try to see if there was like one was more isolated than the other, but they feel about the same in terms of overall isolation level. Neither are super crazy. Like the headphone I'm wearing right now is the HD620S, which I love to wear for monitoring just because it is crazy, crazy isolating. And neither of these are as isolating as that. They are decent as far as isolation is concerned for a closed back but they're not going to isolate as much as something like this or like a 770. All right, let's talk about sound, then we'll move into frequency response and conclusions. So you'll notice I've been comparing this to the E3 a lot, and that's because of a few things. One, the E3 is kind of my benchmark for what a closed back should be, but also because this shares a lot of similarities with the E3, especially now that it has this AMTS tech in it. Now that isn't to say that the sound is going to be perfect, there are upsides and downsides across the board, but overall, I'm gonna spoil it and just say this thing is probably gonna be a banger. Like the original Aeon Noir was, this is a very, very well tuned headphone for the current market. Low frequency is well extended. It's punchy, more punchy than the E3 was and more punchy than the previous generation Noir is. The mid range does not have warmth like we see in a lot of planars these days, but it also doesn't have any notable recesses which is impressive for a closed back. There's a bit more vocal presence going on in the upper mid range, uh, but not quite the same vocal presence we get at normally the peak of the ear gain with something like the E3. And then above that, it is very, very airy sounding. It's not going to be peaky like the 109 Pro, uh, but it's definitely very airy sounding. In comparison, I would say the E3 is a little bit more focused on its ear gain and is a bit smoother up top on the treble versus the Noir, which is maybe a touch less refined in the E3, but is certainly more exciting and engaging sounding. It's a headphone that has a lot of wow factor when you put it on and kind of makes your music sound, uh, I would say, articulated or impressive or kind of showy. Not to an extreme, uh, I would say that this headphone has like a very mild v-shape not a significant one but just enough that it is more engaging but again less refined than what i get out of the e3 it does sound very detailed it does sound very spacious i do like the treble balance in it quite a bit because it doesn't hit very many harsh notes for me there are definitely tracks where if I crank it up, I will start to get treble sibilance, which is something I've noticed in, I guess, a number of headphones from DCA in the past, less so on their AMTS headphones. And I did get this on the previous generation of the Aeon 2 Noir also, but much less in this version than the previous ones. The treble does sound notably more refined than the previous generations, and I do feel like the upper mid-range is filled out a lot better than the previous generations were. I also feel like dynamics is something that is becoming more present in DCA headphones. The E3 was kind of a departure from normal DCA because it actually is a headphone that felt like it had good dynamics, and the Noir continues that trend. Trend. It's still not as punchy and dynamic sounding as, uh, well, certain dynamic driver headphones, which has nothing to do with the name. But as far as a closed back planar is concerned, I find it pretty impressive. Now, the treble of these two headphones is sort of inverted from one another. So I feel like if you really like the tuning of E3, you'll probably like Noir less, or if you really like the tuning of Noir, you'll probably like E3 less. And for me, the answer of the perfect close back lies somewhere in between these two headphones. Like if you could take the both of them and just take an average of the frequency response of both of these two headphones, put it together, you would get something that is damn near perfect for a close back. But given that there will be HRTF and HPTF differences between people, I think that most people are going to lean one way or the other. I do really like both though, and I will say in the end which one I would buy if I was buying a headphone today. One last thing to note here before we get into measurements, this is an easier to drive headphone than the E3, only very slightly. So an amplifier running at the same uh, output level will drive the Noir X a little bit easier to the point where my E3, I can technically plug it up to something like this MacBook Pro right here and at 
close to the extent of what the MacBook can do gets the E3 to what I would call a slightly louder than normal listening level versus the Noir X where the higher end of the volume spectrum on the MacBook Pro gets it to a listening level that is louder than I am comfortable listening by. It. I would say a, a bigger margin than the E3. Now, both of these I would still recommend probably using with a desktop amplifier, or if you're on the go, something like a Quest Style M15 or a Cord Mojo. I think the Mojo is an awesome pairing for it, but you could use this with a laptop just fine if you wanted to. And I don't think it's going to necessarily impact the performance. It's just down to what your listening levels are. Which, by the way, if you do need an amp, we are having a holiday sale over on headphones.com. You can check that out at the link in the video description. Some pretty good stuff on there. Now, I think we've covered sound pretty well. Let's get into frequency response, objective measurements, and then we'll talk about conclusions after that. So here are the measurements of the DCA Noir X. This is an HPTF measurement, which means that it is multiple measurements from multiple different measurement rigs of this one unit that have all been compensated to diffuse fields. So you can see the variation from head to head here. So, like I said, we're getting pretty solid bass extension. It does elevate up a little bit from the mid-range. We have a bit of a bump around like 80 to 90 hertz. It slopes back down into the mid-range, not too much warmth there. We have a little bit of a bump around 1 kilohertz that continues until about 2.2 kilohertz. It's giving us a bit more of that vocal presence. We start to recess in there a little bit with a lower point being between 3 and 3.5 and kilohertz, which is kind of the peak of the ear gain, which is probably why the Noir X sounds a little bit less ear gainy than, say, the E3 does. Uh, we get a bit of a bump there at 5k depending on what head you have because with one of the heads it didn't have a bump at 5k and with another one it did and then from there on we trend upwards into the treble that is definitely where this headphone feels very airy and something you'll notice is on both heads we're still getting pretty solid treble extension at a pretty decent level all the way up there at like 18 kilohertz that is pretty dang high into the treble and i think that's why this thing sounds so airy and so crisp and so clean but you can also see elevations between say 9 kilohertz and 14 kilohertz that depending on how loud you listen can lead to things like sibilance just for the sake of comparison i'm going to show you this is both on the brulon care 4128c the blue line here is the aeon noir x and then the red line is the dca e3 the e3 is showing deeper and louder sub bass extension which you know, it is a larger driver. It does sound that way. The E3 does sound a little bit more bassy than the Noir X, despite the Noir X sounding a little bit punchier. The lower mids on the E3 are also oh so slightly warmer. We get more of that three kilohertz ear gain on the E3, then the E3 is a bit more tame in the treble above that. Now, they both do share kind of similar treble elevation, especially between like five kilohertz and eight kilohertz but if you look specifically between the areas of like 1.8k and about 5k just in that little window there it's almost like they're the inverse of one another so kind of through that region where one is a bit more pronounced at two kilohertz the other is a bit more recessed at two kilohertz and then the inverse is happening around say 3.7 to 4 kilohertz that, I think, is what's going to make these headphones sound quite different depending on who is listening. And I think that's what's going to separate who is going to like which headphone more between the two. Again, as you can see here, I think the E3 is a little bit more refined, a little bit more restrained in its frequency response. But the Noir X still is pretty dang close within the preference bounds and is a bit more engaging. I would say between the two that makes the E3, while still pretty dang accurate, it is a bit more relaxed out of the two. And the Noir is more of that kind of exciting, airy kind of sound. It still has good bass extension. And a big part of this is also going to depend on what kind of music you listen to. And of course, your personal HRTF, because these are high acoustic Z headphones. And that means they're going to vary a bit from head to head. Okay, I think it's time we get into conclusions. So I really, really love the E3. It's obvious that I like the Noir X, but it's obvious also that it's not perfect. That said, I do think this is the best clothes back available at this price by a notable margin. I hope that DCA continues to kind of make this AMTS tech more available in their more and more affordable models. And I would love to see an open back with tuning like the Noir X from DCA. I think that would be really, really cool. But as it is, DCA's strong suit is clearly closed backs. They have shown that time and time again. 
and I am very, very impressed with the Noir X. If I was to buy any headphone today, oh, that's tough. I would probably buy the Noir X, but that's just because there's such a significant price gap between them. The E3 is basically double the price. If money was no object, I would buy the E3, but money is an object. It is something that the vast majority of have to consider. And at that point, I feel like the Noir X does so much of what the E3 can do. I would probably just end up buying the Noir X, despite the E3 being what I think is a little bit better. And the difference in those really comes down to, again, your personal preferences, but also I think the Noir is a little bit more exciting, a little more engaging. I think that for especially listening sessions that are probably two hours and under, the Noir X I think is going to give you uh, probably a bit more excitement during those listening sessions versus the E3 is something that I would put on if I really want to wear a headphone all day or all night and just use it nonstop. It's just going to be less fatiguing. It's a little bit more comfortable. And despite there being an extra bit of weight, I think the E3 is just a little bit more refined. I think of the vast majority of people, I would say the Noir is just an absolute banger, especially at this price point. If money is no object to you at all, or if you are really pushing for just like the best, I think the E3 is the winner there, though not by a massive margin. Like it's closer than you might think, but the E3 really is just a little bit better. Just depends on how much that extra bit is worth it to you. I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to keep using the E3 at home and I'm going to be using the Noir here at the office. And that, I think, is time to wrap up this video, guys. If you liked it, leave a like down below, a comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the Discord or the forum, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Till next one, guys. Peace.